Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Talking Insomnia episode. I am super excited having Riley here. Welcome. Happy to be here, Daniel. So um, I, I remember that I think, you know, we connected via the YouTube channel. I, I remember mm-hmm. starting getting some comments from you and sent then some emails. You've been very supportive on Twitter, et cetera. But let's, uh, let me know, how, how did you come across the channel? Yeah, so uh, about two years ago, I was in a pretty stressful season of life. And I think a lot of that stress for me centered around this, this desire to be in control of some things that were going on in my life and kind of felt out of control. Um, so I had a hard time accepting that and, and uh, started kind of having nightmares, some night terrors, had some panic attacks during the day. And one night I woke up and had a panic attack in the night and it scared me a ton and I uh, became afraid to go back to sleep. I think before that I'd never, never thought about sleep. I would get in bed, get on my phone or play a game or watch TV and until I was sleepy enough, I just fell asleep. I think you talk about the radar, like sleep was not on the radar for me. Um, and at this point, I started getting anxious, had some depression, and then not sleeping just made it all the worse. And gosh, I, I thought I was going to lose my mind or lose my identity. Um, thought I have to, I'll have to quit my job. I'm going to lose everything. I think it, that compounded everything. Felt out of control in a way that I really never had before. I kind of went into like survival mode um, instead of kind of living and, and trying to thrive. I was in surviving. Um, yeah, and so I, you know, super anxious. My wife was helpful just, just to be able to talk to her about it. Um, but I wasn't sure what to do now that sleep was on my radar, and I'd never thought about this before. Talk with my doctor, talk with the therapist a bit, um, and. I knew that I kind of knew in the back of my mind that anxiety was just a huge component of this. Um, so I, you know, talked to my doctor, talked to my therapist, went on sertraline. That was helpful for me. Fixated on sleep for a little bit, probably a few weeks. Um, mainly thought it was maybe a response to the medication I was on. In reality, it was probably just anxiety. I don't think the medication was really doing that much um, to affect my sleep. Um, and after a few weeks, I started sleeping better. And when I started sleeping better, I kind of fell back into those patterns of thinking. Like I was feeling good and I felt like I had controlled my anxiety and I had controlled myself back into sleeping well and into feeling better. Uh, but I felt good. So I kind of kept going on. Um, but something was different. Like in the back of my mind, I now, there was this new awareness of sleep and this little worry that, okay, well, I didn't sleep well that one time. What if it happens again? Um, like, what if I have that thing happen where I don't sleep well for a few weeks? And that was like really super mysterious to me. Like, was it medication? Was it, you know, was it not? What would trigger it again? Like, why did sleep become difficult all of a sudden? And, but so that was kind of in the back of my mind for the next couple of years. Um, and I, though I'd learned a ton through that season of stress, I still thought I could control a lot. Um, and I kind of slipped back into, gradually kind of into survival mode. Uh, and with that came the fear of losing sleep again. And it just, I, in my mind, I was like, I cannot go back to where I was two years ago. And so that little fear of like, what if it happens again? What if it happens again? What if I don't sleep? Was just on my radar for a couple of years. And there would be nights where I wouldn't sleep and it would kind of just keep keep that going. Uh, and I kind of began to associate some patterns in my life with sleep. Um, this created like these deep links in my survival mindset between like actions and my sleep. Um, like if I had some alcohol in the evening, I believed it helped me sleep. If I stayed up until I was tired and I couldn't keep my eyes open, but I believed it helped my sleep. If I slept in the morning, I felt like it helped my sleep. Like all these sleep efforts as, as you talk about. Um, and the efforts only increased over time. And so did like the deep links between those efforts and my sleep and my mind. Um, so I feel like when I was like in this survival mode, my brain was trying to help me and and like find things that it thought were helping me keep surviving um, and just create these huge links like, oh man, I got to sleep in or oh man, I, I got to stay in bed for this amount of time or oh man, if I, you know, if I don't go to bed at this time or, or man, I really feel like that, that drink I'm having with, you know, with dinner or those couple of drinks in the evening is helping me sleep even though there's hours between them. 
they're not really linked, but my brain was like linking them together. So this is a little bit of a story, kind of a, a don't want to be long winded, but um, yeah. And I felt like I was going back into the survival mode. Insomnia was kind of starting to, to set on again. And I felt like I was like letting life reactively, I was reactively letting life press into me rather than like proactively pressing out into my life. Um, just responding to life and not living because I just was afraid. I was afraid of losing sleep again. Um, and even though I didn't have like the education that I have now from your channel, I like, I knew something was wrong. I like, cannot thinking like I knew something was off. And so I decided to press out against it and try some stuff. And so I began exercising daily. I stopped drinking. Those are good things to do. But in my mind, I think they were sleep efforts. I think they were, um, you know, things that I was doing to try to keep that control. Um, I did but melatonin, CBD, valerian root, sleep time tea, essential oils, went to bed early. I was like hunkering down for the big one. Like it was World War Three. I was like, if this happens, <laughs> I can't happen. I'm like so afraid of it. Um, and I was making these positive changes, but I think I was just further trying to prove that I was in control. Like my behaviors had changed, but my beliefs hadn't. And, you know, we're like staying in bed for a long amount of time. Um, what could be, you know, in my mind was just the same as running during the day. Like there were things that I was doing to try to control my sleep. Um, I was on Reddit, I was on, I was Google searching. I was like obsessed. Um, and yeah, it, you know, I found your channel on this time too, because someone recommended it on Reddit. So that's a long roundabout way of saying how I, <laughs> how I discovered right. your channel. <laughs> um, but it was in that time of like all this research and I was just obsessed. And of course, because I was obsessed with my sleep, like I wasn't letting go of it. And because I wasn't letting go of it, it was controlling me. I wasn't controlling it because um, you can't control, can't control your sleep. And like when I found your channel, it was like a it was just like huge breath of fresh air. Um, I respected like your medical background and um, your willingness to learn and like have conversations. And I think there's a humility you bring to the conversation that just was really refreshing. Um, I also like tried to buy, like I was like, I'm gonna buy all your products. I'm, I'm gonna buy all your products. Like I'm gonna pay for bedtime. And you were like, I don't think you need to do that. And there was something about that that I really respected because <laughs> I was, I. I think you noticed that I was just desperately trying to fix a problem with more control. Like if I can just get this thing, I'll fix it. But you know, your whole principle, which has been so helpful to me is, no, it's not about controlling. It's about letting go. Like you have to let go of your desire to sleep. Um, 100%. And I think, uh, you know, I didn't want to interrupt earlier because, because no, great. you were, you were telling such a, you know, such an important story, but uh, I think at this point, first of all, Super happy we connected. Thanks you for coming on. Uh, it's a real pleasure. And um, and now, as we talked about before we went on, uh, I want to first kind of lean into. I know this is going to be unpleasant, part. but yeah. you know, kind of go over the struggle, and then of course, like what changed after uh, you know you started yeah. really understanding. So, uh, so it was actually, if I understand it, like there was a period a couple of years ago of stress caused insomnia. Mm -hmm. And you went on medications, things to get a little bit better. You thought you had control, and then this kind of reactivated again. But when was the first kind of initial period of, of stress and insomnia? Yeah, so that was that that period a couple of years ago when I was experiencing a bunch bunch of stress at work, and I think my whole life I've responded to stress by just pushing it down mm -hmm. and pushing it further and further down. I feel like that's a narrative with so many people who struggle with sleep. It certainly is for me. Like. Um, not processing that anxiety, owning it and then releasing it, but instead just saying, nope, I'm not gonna listen to you. Down, down, down you go. Um, so that was what was happening two years ago. And it basically just started to, to come out of my sleep because <laughs> I would sleep and I was so anxious during the day, but not listening to my anxiety that I'd have nightmares or I'd wake up. I mean, there were, there were like nights I would wake up yelling like because I was having nightmares or, or night terrors. And, when I had that panic attack at night, that threw me for a loop because then I was afraid of going to sleep because I was afraid of having those nightmares and afraid of having another panic attack. 
and then I wasn't sleeping. And then my mind said, oh, there's a world where you can't sleep. That's a terrible world. Let's go all in on that. So that's, exactly. yeah, that's what happened to me. So kind of like just to reiterate, because I think this is super important. Uh, there was this, a stressful period. You were kind of not listening to the brain. You were kind of like not mm -hmm. wanting it. And, but it sounded like even then sleep wasn't really on the radar that much, right? No. Yeah, it really wasn't. And even for those few weeks, um, you know, when I went on search lane for, um, uh, for, for depression, I, I didn't really even have like a category for insomnia yet. I just kind of assumed, okay, if I'm anxious, it'll go away. And it did, but now sleep was on my radar and I, I, I knew, okay, it's possible for me to not sleep and I hate how that makes me feel. And so for the past two years, that thought was in the back of my mind. Like I got to sleep tonight. And if I don't, I'm going to be back where I was two years ago. So you, 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 I think you were thinking was, you know, the medication may have helped, but you didn't want to think too much about it. It was just like, you knew insomnia was there, but let's not go then Let's not think about it. Right. Yeah. Let's, in fact, let's avoid thinking about it. Let's, let's not even entertain the possibility. And so obviously because I, I was unwilling to, have this happening and are unwilling to even think about it. I was always kind of thinking about it for, exactly. for two years. Yeah. And, and during those, those two years, you know, my imagination is that sleep wasn't terrible, but it wasn't good. Like, yep. what was it like? <clears throat> uh, it was off and on. Um, you know, sometimes I'd wake up in the middle of the night anxious just because I was, you know, anxious during the day too. And I would be panicked and I would be thinking, okay, I can't go back to sleep. I might be up for a few hours. Sometimes it would take me a while to get to bed. You know, a few nights a week, I was having trouble sleeping. Um, but I was in a place where I was like, I think I can manage like this. And so that survival thing was like, let's just keep this thing going and I can do this for a while. And rather than, you know, being proactive and actually fully letting go and being willing, um, be willing to, to be like that. So was it kind of like, okay, you had some anxiety, you slept a little one night, and then you thought, okay, well, I can, I can do this thing. And then it seemed to help and it's something like that. Yeah, it, it was exactly like that. And the place that I got, you know, when the pandemic hit and just everyone's stress went up and we're all at home and, you know, have a lot more time to, to kind of sit in our anxieties. Um, my general anxiety got a lot worse. My depression kind of came back a little bit. My sleep started to get affected. And then I was, you know, I was scared. I was like, okay it's happening again. It's happening again. This thing that happened to me two years ago where I was panicked and not sleeping, it's going to happen again. And it kind of started, it did start happening exactly. again. Yeah. And that's when I started making all those lifestyle changes, which only compounded the, the anxiety. So that, that's yeah. when you really went down to like oh, yeah. exercising more, but and trying all the supplements and everything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I mean, I was on Reddit reading stuff. I mean, I read, I actually read uh, Why We Sleep before I found your stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. <laughs> like, it was so bad. And, oh man, I mean, I read a couple of books by David Asprey, the kind of called like biohacking thing. And I think one thing that I love that you talk about is so much of the problems with the wellness industry. Like, um, kind of the underlying promise of the wellness industry is you can like hack your way into eternity. Like... <laughs> If you do enough, you can control exactly how much you sleep, what your day's like, and like obviously a healthy lifestyle is incredibly important, um, but we're not fully in control of what happens in our lives or in our sleep, and I didn't want to believe that, so I went down the rabbit hole. Absolutely, and like, you know, as you were talking about Matt Walker's book, there we're both laughing because now you know, you, you see the problem with it and you've gotten past to it. And I'm laughing too, because I know that, but yeah. you know, for everyone out there that, that isn't there yet, it is, it is, it is, oh my gosh, the book in itself, I think has caused so much anxiety, mm -hmm. but then it's also like, it's picked up in, in blogs and media posts and that said, it's uh, very problematic, very problematic. Yeah, absolutely. But all right. So, so you, so you went really down the rabbit hole here and before we again get to like, okay, where things get better, right. how, like what was going on sleep wise in this year, in this period? Yeah, I, I was, I mean, there was a few weeks when I was like in full on, I'm going to take back control of my life again. 
have ideas. There's some good there, but also something, you know, dysfunctional there. Um, where I was like trying to run like three times a day and I, um, I was just, I was on my phone like all day Googling, like just turning all the blue links purple in my Google. Like, like I'm going to read every single article I can, doesn't matter the source, which in hindsight, I was just trying to find that nugget of hope. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, that, that was obviously a, not a great way to do it because I was getting information you were, from a ton of sources. And you were like, you know, again, I, I know this is kind of uncomfortable, but I think it's so important for people, yeah. because people that hear this now, they will say like, well, did he really have that much trouble sleeping? How much, like how, what was, what was the nights like? Oh yeah. So, uh, I mean, at the worst I would go, I mean, I think I had a good, like solid, um, I mean, for a couple of months, I was getting like a few hours of sleep um, a night. I was getting just core sleep. Um, I would get in bed. I would toss and turn. I had um, paradoxical insomnia. I think in hindsight, I, I can see that. But I thought I thought there were nights I wasn't sleeping at all. In hindsight, I think I was a little bit. And and I, I think that's an encouragement I, I would give to anyone listening to. Um, because during the day, I was kind of okay. I was miserable and anxious, but I was making it because my body was making sure I was getting the sleep I needed, but nothing more. Um, so, you know, I'd go a couple of days where I might've slept one or two hours a night and then I would sleep, um, you know, maybe four or five. Um, and those weeks were, were terrible. I mean, those couple months were, were awful because I felt so trapped and I didn't know how to get out. And I thought the only way to get out is to go further and further into more trying, <laughs> yes. like more doing, um, reading more articles. And there's just the sense of desperation that, oh man, just the, the thought of the big, like you call it the big one. I think that's a great name for it. Like the thought of that coming back, but I was producing it by how much I was trying to avoid it. And that just made me feel more trapped. hundred percent. And, and I, you know, again, I think what you just said, it was a little bit in passing. So to make sure everybody hears this, that you you more than once uh, you had this experience that you literally didn't sleep at all mm -hmm. oh yeah yep didn't sleep at all i i mean i would i mean there were nights i would i would be in tears just because i was so desperate um and what's ironic is like the worst insomnia that i had was only when I was responding to being afraid of the insomnia I had two years ago, which wasn't even as bad as the one I was having now. Right. And now that I was afraid of it, it made it all the worse. 100%. I can't, I can't help but take it like a very, very quick side to There was some, a client I'm working with right now who said something that was so profound today. He was, he's doing much better. And he said that sometimes I don't think I'm an insomniac. I think I'm just somebody who's afraid of becoming one. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, that I think that's it. It's like, it's not the fact that it's like the thought of having that again is kind of what keeps yeah. it going. Right. I, I totally think so. All right. So, so we talked about that and, and now, uh, you know, you're in this place and in a way, in a weird way, all your obsession kind of led to a good place where you, you finally did find something right. helpful. You found my channel. So th that was great. And so talk to, take me back to that. That was like a couple of months, maybe four or five months ago or something like that. That's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, it was actually on a Reddit post. Someone had just posted, go to the sleep school, just watch it. <laughs> it's like, it's <laughs> like someone was throwing a lifeline into the, into the, the deep end. Of, Cause you know, I, I think Reddit is, is a great tool. I think there's a lot, a lot of great communities. I will tell any, you know, anyone who wants to take on their insomnia, the insomnia subreddit is, is not a great, is not a great place um, because it's mostly it's a lot of effort and understandably it's a lot of anxious people just like me um, but people who get better leave they bounce out of there because they don't need to be on scrolling on their phones all the time looking for answers so but someone had posted your channel and I opened it up and I was like this is I don't know how I don't know where this has been but it was so helpful I read set it and forget it uh, I read um uh, uh why we don't sleep that's uh, another one of yours too um red sasha stevens book i kind of so i found a new rabbit hole i was like okay i'm gonna go down this one uh yeah so that's kind of when i when i dove in and um it was just it was so refreshing 
to hear people who were not panicked um, and who were not speaking panicked language about sleep. That was like so refreshing. Um, I think that's one of the greatest parts of this channel is like, you, took, you talk about hope being a commodity that we can't get enough of. And I think that's one of the, the greatest things about um, this resource is like, it's so hopeful. It's like, you can sleep. Sometimes people just need to hear, that's what I needed to hear. Um, so it was super helpful for me. Yeah, I, rem I remember actually getting like, uh, a, a you know, the first comments from you. They were like, yeah. it, it, was, it, was, it was those comments that you're so happy to get when somebody, you, you because I knew that you that you got it. I knew that you got it right away. It was just so nice. Every time Riley was on, I was like, oh, this is going to be something nice again, et cetera. So that was wonderful. And um, and now, you know, you were starting to understand. You had this hope, mm -hmm. you were reading, you were understanding, and you understanding, and you started started to sleep better early on or it took a while or what happened? Yeah, so I, I kind of got on a bumpy road of recovery. You know, once you start to, once you start to learn more about sleep and through that education, like, um, and you start to do the set it part, you can go a certain, you can go so far. You can't go all the way until you forget it, but you can go so far when you set it. And I, I was in set it mode for probably like a month or two. <laughs> I kind of wanted to stay there. <laughs> um, and so I, you know, I read all the books. I think I, I mean, I watched hours of, of your channel, certainly because it was comforting and helpful, but um, I do think I, uh, I begin to obsess kind of about, I begin to obsess a little bit more in a different way. I begin to obsess kind of in a hopeful way, but sleep, where it eclipsed my vision negatively. Now it was kind of eclipsing my vision. But I was feeling better about it, but I still hadn't forgotten it. I hadn't let it let it go. And so I'm guessing that you were, so you had this kind of yo-yo thing, like uh, mm -hmm. you were sleeping well sometimes, but then it kind of not at all. And was it like that? Yeah, so once I discovered the channel, started learning more, I was, you know, I was sleeping better, uh, uh, I was getting a few more hours a night. I was still tracking it like crazy. And, you know, I'd get up and tell my wife, okay, I was, you know, I went to bed at this time. I woke up at this time. I was looking at the clock all night, um, even though I know it's, you know, don't do that. Um, but once you start to see a little bit of progress, you, you're kind of like, okay, this is, I'm putting my focus on this because I'm excited about it and I, I'm learning more and, and that does well for a little period of time. So, um, yeah, so starting to sleep in a few more hours a night. Um, and it's funny that the least, the, more, the most I, the nights I slept the most was on nights that I would, you know, go hang with friends. Um, you know, we would be socially distanced, but I would have a, you know, go have a conversation with a friend not about sleep or like, um, you know, read a book that wasn't sleep book. Like that, those nights then I was sleeping better because I was able to turn that education into um, actual uh, relinquishing of control. 100%. I, I think I remember actually one of, I think I was live one time and you, and I think you, you, you commented that something that really helped me was like, go out, meet people, be with friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, that was, the, that, that was one of those like magical moments. Like when I, yeah, I went to a park with some friends on a Friday night for a few hours and just sat outside and talked to them about not sleep and came home that night. I was pretty tired, went to bed and slept like six hours just solidly and i was like okay that there's something there <laughs> there's something there for sure um i still did, was did it, I, just to ahead. stay there for a second did, did it kind of click that okay I, i'm getting it it was because i wasn't thinking i wasn't trying that's why it happened it did but i'll tell you this like i think fully letting go like the forget it thing has been the hardest part for me um i think i've recently been able to for the most part, forget it. Um, but once I learned, you know, from your channel about sleep and from the books and, um, I, I felt so empowered that I felt like I needed to keep focusing on it. And, um, I remember I, I a long email that I sent you, I was like, okay, so do you think, do you think I should get bedtime now? Like now that I've, and I basically outlined like all these things that I've learned and, I think you're, you were right to say like, no, you don't need to learn anymore. Like you need to, you need to forget it. And, um, 
yeah so but I was in that like again I was in that set it phase for for so long um still doing some sleep efforts I mean I, I think I still was when I would run there was still this thought in the back of my mind oh you know I'll probably sleep better tonight. I think it's gonna help um or uh you know it wasn't as bad as as before when I was you know doing all the uh, all the efforts I feel like yeah so, so often in those threads it's like okay you mix a little bit of juice and some coconut oil rub it on your feet and then brew some melatonin kombucha and, and your collagen and then kind of take that you're going to be you're going to be set that's that's just not how it works um so yeah still doing i was still doing some efforts but not as much um but still had a little bit of that control um just until recently just until and and, and recently like take us back like is it the, the last two months or something like that you've been really kind of really being able to let go yeah um so i saw you know i saw a lot of improvement when i started learning i felt a lot more hopeful i think but honestly before that you need to go back into like a really how i was feeling in that really hard hard moment both a few months ago and two years ago i mean i was super depressed uh anxious there were times where I was not not ideating suicide, but definitely like thinking about like really dark thoughts. Um, Cause I was like, I can't go on like this. Um, and I think anyone who like struggles with insomnia or sleep for any, any amount of time has felt those thoughts of like life can't go on like this. So I, I wasn't there, um, but yeah, started to, to, sleep a little bit better, begin to, um, um, yeah, get a few more hours, uh, uh, at night. And then the letting go was realizing, realizing over time that there wasn't more to learn. And I think that was frustrating for me. Um, and that actually applying it would be doing the thing that I kind of knew I needed to do all along, which is to let go of control, um, to truly let go which is really hard. I think if, so I, I totally get when people are struggling to sleep or any anxiety, like to really let go of that control is incredibly difficult because your brain is telling you, no, you got to hold on because you got to survive. And if you let go of this, it's going to eat you up. Like you're not, you know, and that's not true, but that's, that's been that, that last stage for me has been, um, I, I, kind of pulled out of watching videos for a little while um and you know read books that were not about sleep and um yeah <laughs> I, yeah I, I two things that come to mind here that i wanted uh first one i want to just comment and then one question uh, mm -hmm. for you uh or kind of almost reminiscing here to remember something but the first one is you know i have this sometimes i don't think i've ever used this analogy on the channel but i basically think and this is where i i so often talk about like courage is the thing it is you have to have so much yeah. courage because yeah. if you use this analogy of the grizzly bear that i often use and say like how the way you teach yourself that you to let go is basically like saying somebody okay this grizzly bear is going to come and attack you mm -hmm. and you have to just do nothing yeah that is why it's yeah. so hard to let go that's exactly right that's exactly right i mean i used to i think in those weeks where it was like really hard right before i discovered your channel i would like kind of jokingly to my wife, but I mean, I was super anxious. Like when we would get in bed, I literally, this is so ironic in, in hindsight, but I literally told her, okay, it's time to go to battle. <laughs> like that's what I would say to her when I got in bed, which now that I've learned like what I, you know, that, that, that mindset from your channel and from those books is that mindset just, that generates all kinds of insomnia. Um, but that's what we think. That's what our brains naturally want to do. It's like, okay, I, I'm going into this, survival battle because i need to protect myself from this grizzly bear um 100 I, I literally had uh today like there was somebody that i'm working with on on my app that graduated you know was saying me i'm ready to go and i was super happy and she said i finally conquered insomnia and i was like <laughs> i was like i can't help but sneak in one coaching thing here the reason you're doing well is that you're not trying to conquer it yes. and i think she fully got it but that is the thing and now I want to ask, you know, on a, on a different note, you said like there was a time where you kind of pulled away from even listening and tuning mm -hmm. in and 
And I think you came back and said to somebody else again, like, try a sleep detox. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I knew at some point I needed to pull away. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll still, I watch your videos when they're posted, but I, there was a time when I jumped so heavily in, I was just like, I had a window on my computer open during the day when I was working and your videos were just on repeat. And I was like, just trying to take it in. And I knew that probably wasn't good for, you know, for truly letting go. So stop doing that. Um, I think you advise a sleep detox. And I think, again, just a key moment for me where I like realized uh, I needed to, to pull away was you know, at the end of one of your videos, like I think you'd responded to that long email. And then you were, you were talking about bedtime at the end of the episode. And you're like, if you want some more text-based coaching, um, and you want something more intensive, I don't think this is you, Riley. <laughs> Maybe you can get bedtime. And I was watching that with my wife. <laughs> we just kind of looked at each other and burst out laughing because it was literally <laughs> this like huge neon sign, like, okay, I think, you know, I've been through this hell. I've learned a ton. I'm feeling better. I think I need to really let go um, and not watch as much videos. Um, and letting go is really hard to tell someone to do because it to do it you have to not do something and how do you not do something um and i still haven't totally figured that out but i think it for me it's been a gradual process of shifting my attention um and then letting my attention find other things and sit on those things um things that i enjoy and things in my life 100 and i think the last the last piece here is just um you know over the past, because I know everybody who's listening, they want to know this, you know, like, okay, over the past couple of weeks here, what's your sleep like? It's a great question. Uh, and I think this is like, this is where I've gotten to in the past, I would say a few weeks, um, is I, I don't really care about it. Um, I don't really care about it. And I mean, I thought about this the other day, I think I woke up at like five, a few nights ago, and was like up for like, couple hours and then went back to bed for like 30 minutes then woke up and I didn't think about it during the day and that was a, a signal for me oh I don't care as much about the quality of sleep that I'm getting and that's really good um so I'm still waking up in the middle of the night every once in a while and I'll be up for you know I might be up for an hour or so and I'll just read on my phone and um but I'm it doesn't jar me um I think one of the hardest shifts for me, and I'm sure for a lot of people is, you know, you, a lot of people come to your channel, like, and they want to sleep better, which totally makes sense. Um, and I think the, the biggest contribution I've gotten from your channel is to be okay to not sleep well. Um, and then of course I sleep better, but the main, the main thing I've gotten is like, it's okay. If I don't sleep tonight, I'm going to be okay. And it's okay. If, if I struggle, it's going to be okay. Um, 100%. And I think this one, this, this is like not, uh, don't respond to this one, Riley, because okay. it, it, will, it will seem like I'm, I'm trying to get you to respond, but I'm not. I'm just telling to everyone who's listening now, oh, you heard me say like two or three times, I'm asking Riley how he's sleeping. And not once has he said, I'm sleeping seven hours, I'm sleeping six hours, I'm sleeping five hours. And, 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 that, and that is the thing. That is the key. And, and so it is, it, for, for everyone out there who's struggling, it seems like crazy. Like, how can I get to a point where I don't even know? But, but that is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, as, as we heard you say, Riley, <clears throat> you know, you, your life is better. You're enjoying life. You know, it's, that's, and that's, that's, that's all, that's all we, that's all we should, you know, that's all we need. That's right. Yeah, I told my wife yesterday, uh, I think it was yesterday, I said, I don't think I can actually have insomnia again. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a night or a few nights where I don't sleep. But I think for me, and I, I certainly don't want to like demean anyone's experience. I think people have had like, years and years where, where they've, they've had the experience for me that was just a, a, couple, uh, a couple of years or, or a period of months. Um, but insomnia for me was, was a state of mind and um, an, an identity piece, and um, and uh, it was a narrative that I was constructing from 
a few events that were in my life that were really stressful and were really hard. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think I can, I think I can still have bad nights of sleep, um, but I don't think I can have like insomnia in, in the way that I felt like I had it, um, which is, I think the greatest gift uh, from this whole it, thing. It's just like music to my ears hearing this because that's, that's how I, that's how I feel myself. And, you know, yeah, I, I'm somebody, I never had insomnia myself. You know, I had nights of trouble sleeping, of course, but, but it's like, so, so hearing this from you is so powerful because I can say, and this is easier for me to say that I think I'm personally immune to insomnia because I know so much, but what I always like to tell people is that immunity is transferable. You can Absolutely. get there. Absolutely. And I think sleep is like, once you begin to let go, like once I begin to let go, I've, I've started to see sleep as like a, a gift. Um, sleep is this like daily admission that I'm not fully in control. Um, Cause by design, like every night, every night when you go to sleep, you're saying, I can't control this. And um, for type A personalities, which is totally me, which I totally resonate with where I get a lot of value out of like, okay, I control the stuff in my life. And sleep is, is this admission that I don't control everything. And um, I have to give up control of that sleep to to sleep and give up control of, of how many hours I'm getting and, and all the stuff that it's so easy to fixate on. Wow, that's such a, such a powerful one to, and a way to like to finish up this talk here. Like I, I'm going to try to repeat it. Like sleep is this kind of daily admission that I don't have control. So every, you know, mm -hmm. another way of saying it's like you have a daily, like every day you have an opportunity to that's right let to let go yeah it's by yeah by some strange design we are given this daily opportunity to let go every single day which is really frustrating for anxious people like me for people who like to control like me but um a really cool invitation to 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 step more into to help and positivity and um yeah this is this is amazing. I think you know a few a few other times I've done you know talk to people like yourself, uh, Riley, and I thought like this this is like when people hear this they're not going to be able to have insomnia, which is not the case, of course. <laughs> but I, it just goes to say like how much I appreciate this was so so helpful. Right, right, absolutely. I appreciate everything that that you're doing, and um, yeah, I, I would yeah just encourage people to man, you can you can sleep. I think. I think something Martin Reed says too, which I think is, is really helpful, but it is totally possible even in the moments that it feels impossible and you're holding on with all your might in survival mode, you can, you can go back into thriving. Um, and it does take a lot of courage and I'm still working on it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be back around every once in a while. Sounds good. And I, I you know, can't wait to have you back, Riley. And, and again, thanks so much for coming on today and, and we'll talk soon. All right. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Daniel.